The valve contract is responsible for starting the debt auction and the surplus auction. In this video, we will rewrite this contract. To start off with, I'm going to first copy this contract. Inside my terminal, I'll start off by creating a new file. I'll call this contract dsengine.soul. DS standing for debt surplus. So this will be debt surplus engine. And then open the file and then paste the code. Okay, we'll start off by renaming the interfaces. The flop light will be the interface to the debt auction. So we'll rename this as I debt auction. And it has three functions. We only need one of the functions in this contract. The function that we're going to need is called kick. And we rename the function kick to start. Start the debt auction. As I review, the inputs are the highest bidder. Lot, this will be the amount of MKR to sell. And bid will be the amount of die to collect. And it's going to return the auction ID. Okay, moving on, we have the flat like interface. This will be the surplus auction. So let's rename this as I surplus auction. And again, inside this contract, we're only going to need one function. This function will be kick, which we will rename it as start. It takes in two inputs, lot, again, which will be the amount of MKR to sell, and bid will be the amount of die to collect. And then it's going to return at unit 256. This will be the auction ID. Okay, so we have the debt auction and the surplus auction. Moving on, we have the interface for the bat light contract. We will import this. So let's say import ICDP engine from interfaces ICDP engine dot so. Okay, and we're also going to need the alt contract. So let's say import alt from go one above lib alt dot so. And let's also import the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker. Okay, and then moving on. Let's work out the bow contract now. So starting off, we have some logic for authorization. We don't need this. Instead, we'll just inherit this contract from the alt contract. And later on, you'll also see that we're going to need a circuit breaker contract. So say circuit breaker. Okay, let's start renaming the state variables. The first state variable is bet. This will be the CDP engine. So for the interface, I'll rename it as ICDP engine. And then bat, I'll rename it as CDP engine. Next, we have the flap like interface. Let's rename this as I surplus auction. We also rename the state variable flapper. So let's say surplus auction. And then moving on, we have the flop like interface. Let's rename this as I debt auction. And then rename the state variable flapper. We will rename this as debt auction. Okay, moving on, let's rename the three state variables sin. Sin with a capital S and Ash with a capital A. Sin will represent debt Q, as the comment says. When a collateral auction is started, the amount will be recorded in this mapping from the timestamp to the amount that is inside the collateral auction. Let's rename this as debt Q. You'll see later that this is used as a condition to either start a surplus auction or a debt auction. And then Sin with a capital S, let's call this total debt on Q. When the amount is recorded into the debt queue, it will also be added to the total debt on queue. So the mapping will be from timestamp to the amount of debt that was recorded at the timestamp. And total debt on queue will be the total of this mapping. And then we have a state variable called ash. This will be the total debt on a debt auction. Let's rename this as total debt on debt auction. So to clarify, total debt on Q will be the total debt in a collateral auction. Total debt on debt auction will be the total debt on the debt auction. Okay, moving on. We have the state variable weight, bump, dump, and sump. Weight is a duration before a debt that is registered into this mapping, debt Q, can be removed. Let's rename this as pop debt delay. Dump will be the lot size for a debt auction. Let's call this debt auction lot size and sum will be the bid size for a debt auction let's call this debt auction bid size okay and then moving on we have the state variables bump and hump bump is the flap fixed lot size so that's is surplus auction lot size the amount of mkr to be sold in a surplus auction this is surplus auction lot size and then we have hump the comment says this is surplus buffer. In other words, this is the minimum amount of surplus that must be inside this contract before a surplus auction can be started. Let's call this min surplus. And then we have a state variable called lib, which is handled by the circuit breaker, so we no longer need this. Okay, let's move on to the constructor. 
The inputs are bat, which will be the address of the CDP engine, the flapper, which will be the address of the surplus auction, surplus auction, and then the flopper will be the address of the debt auction, debt auction. Next, we have some logic for authorization, which is handled by the auth contract and the logic handled by the circuit breaker. The function hope, we renamed it as allow account modification. So what the constructor is doing is it's setting up the CDP engine, the surplus auction and the debt auction, and then calling the CDP engine allow account modification. What this will do is this will allow the surplus auction to modify the account of this contract. Okay, let's move on. The math function we do not need in this video, we'll just import the math library. And then the functions for file, to keep the video short, we'll remove these. What these do is these will set the state variables. For example, here it sets the surplus auction and here it sets the debt auction. Okay, and then moving on, let's rewrite our first function, fess. As the comment says, this function will push the debt to Q. So let's rename this as push debt to Q. The input will be the amount of debt to push. Let's rename this as debt. And then it's adding to the debt queue, debt queue, at the current timestamp, block dot timestamp, for the amount debt. So let's rewrite this as plus equals debt. And then it's also adding to send with a capital S, which will be total debt on plus equals debt. When this function is called, it can only be called by authorized account. And when this function is called, it will add to the debt queue for the timestamp, block dot timestamp, for the amount debt. And it will also increment the total, total debt on queue. Now this function is called by the liquidation engine when the liquidation engine starts a collateral auction. Okay, and then moving on, let's work out the function flog. Let's rename this function as pop debt from queue. And the input will be error. This will be the timestamp to remove the debt from. So let's call this t for timestamp. First, it's going to check that t plus wait, wait will be pop debt delay is less than or equal to now, block dot timestamp. And then it's going to subtract from the total debt on queue for the amount debt queue at time t, and then set debt queue at time t to zero. Let's look at how these two functions, push debt to queue and pop debt from queue, are played out over time. So when a liquidation engine starts a collateral auction, they will call the function push debt to queue. This will register the debt to debt queue at this timestamp, and then also increase total debt on queue. After some time has passed, anyone can call this function to decrease this total debt on queue, which is registered for this timestamp t. And then it will set the debt queue for this timestamp equal to zero. Basically, call this function to increase total debt on queue, wait a little bit time, and then afterwards, anyone can decrease the total debt on queue by calling this function. You'll see later that this state variable total debt on queue is one of the conditions to either start the debt auction or a surplus auction. Okay, so let's move on. The next function we will rewrite is heal. As the comment says, this is debt settlement. So let's rename this as settle debt. For the input, it's gonna take in the amount of debt to settle, which will be in units of red. And this red must be less than or equal to the amount of coin that this address has. And the other condition is rad must be less than or equal to the unbacked debt of this contract minus total debt on queue minus total debt on debt auction. We can rewrite this as rad plus total debt on queue plus total debt on debt auction must be less than or equal to unbacked debt. In other words, the amount of unbacked debt must be greater than the debt in both of the auctions, debt in the collateral auction and in the debt auction plus the amount to burn. If the condition is satisfied, it's going to call the function burn. Okay, so that's the function settle debt. Let's move on. This is a function called by the debt auction when the function bid is called. And what this function will do is it will decrease the amount of unbacked debt. Let's rename this function as decrease auction debt. It first checks that the amount of debt to decrease is less than or equal to total debt on debt auction. And then it also checks that this is less than the amount of coin that this contract has. And then it subjects total debt on debt auction minus equals red. And then call the function CDP engine dot burn. So when a debt auction is successful, it will decrease this state variable total debt on debt auction. 
and then call the function cdp engine dot burn. When this function is called, it will decrease the amount of unpacked debt that this contract has. Okay, and then moving on, we have the function flop. This is a function to start the debt auction. So let's call this start debt auction. First, I'm going to rewrite this expression. Somp is debt auction bid size. Sin is unpacked debt. Same with for capital S is total debt on Q. And Ash is total debt on debt auction. So it checks that the debt auction bid size is less than or equal to the unbacked debt minus total debt on Q minus total debt on debt auction. I'm going to rewrite the expression as the following. Bid size plus total debt on Q plus total debt on debt auction is less than or equal to unbacked debts. Now you can see that the amount of unbacked debt that is registered in the CDP engine must be greater than or equal to the amount of bid plus the current amount of debt on the collateral auctions plus the current amount of debt on the debt auction. In other words, there must be enough unbacked debt to start the debt auction. Okay, and then moving on, it checks that CDP engine.coin of address this is equal to zero, that this contract doesn't have any coins to pay the unbacked debt. And to this, we add the debt auction bit size and then call the function debt auction dot start. Dump will be debt auction dot size. Okay, let's move on. Next, we have the function flat. This will be a function to start the surplus auction. Start surplus auction. It first checks that the coin for this contract is greater than or equal to whatever this amount is. Let me rewrite this. The amount of coin in this contract must be greater than or equal to the unbacked debt plus the surplus auction lot size plus min surplus. Min surplus will be the amount of minimum coins that must be locked in this contract. Surplus auction lot size will be the amount of coin that will be sold in a surplus auction. Okay, next I'm going to rewrite this part of the expression. The expression is that the unbacked debt minus the total debt on Q minus the total debt on debt auction must be equal to zero. In other words, the amount of unbacked debt must be equal to the amount of debt in a collateral auction plus the amount of debt in a debt auction. Once this condition is satisfied, it will call the function kick or start the auction for the amount surplus auction lot size. And finally, we have the function cage, which is called during the emergency shutdown. To keep this video short, this function is simple, so we will not cover it here. Okay, so that completes our contract. Let's try compiling the contract. Inside my terminal, I'll type for build. And our contract compiles. 